herbicides that people use for cover crops on the lawn, yeah, there's debate on whether that's actually good for your permanent lawn, but um, nice green lawn, nice green grass in the, in the winter time, you can start planting it now. So there are three kinds of ryegrass we have, uh, perennial rye, annual rye, and Elbon rye, which I like to call elbow rye. The um, perennial rye is not perennial in Texas. Um, it is what people usually use to oversee the lawn because it's fine bladed. It's a little neat and tidy, pretty little uh, winter grass, um, it, but it's more expensive. So if you're if you're wanting it to for the chickens, I'd go for the cheaper one, which would be annual rye. And the third one, Elbon rye, that's the rye that um, we get rye flour out of. So it's also known as cereal rye, and Elbon rye gets this tall, okay? So if you keep cutting it, I have proven that you can keep it right about here. But if you let it get taller than um, one foot, it's going to be too tough to till. And generally speaking, not for chickens, but for a garden, we would plant these things to improve the soil. We plant it, till it under. And so, um, yeah, Elbon rye um, it would be too tough to till if it gets over a foot tall. But the other aspect of Elbon rye that I like is if you're trying to control weeds because it has phytotoxins in its roots. So it helps to fight weeds, you know, using its own natural herbicide in the roots, uh, the root system of the Elbon rye. The other thing that people use that for is if you have uh, the bad kind of nematodes, the root knot nematodes that destroy plants. It's one of the steps you can take to help manage. Um, there's no control really long term, but to manage root knot nematodes if you have them in, the, in your soil. Hopefully you don't, because that's a problem. Any other questions? It's heard that you're not supposed to bring chickens to Is that true? Now, see, you're asking somebody who doesn't know. Uh, feeding I'm chickens potato right. skins. Anybody heard if that's bad or good? Somebody also told, told me you're never supposed to eat food that has mushrooms in it. You're never supposed to reheat that. Have you ever heard that? I've never heard that. Anyway, so. I haven't heard that. My general rule is not that it's 100%, but it's a, aside from styrofoam, where they have no judgment calls, but I let the chickens look, kind of decide what they're going to eat. Um, if I put it down, I would think that's natural, and it has a lot of iodine, I think. It, is. it has something in the skins of the chickens. Is it potassium? Is it potassium? So I would think it's okay. I guess, right, depending on, that might be what the gen has. Just what Patrick brought up, if it's not organic, maybe a lot of this, a lot more pesticides that go into potato crops on the non-organic ones. So that could be a bigger issue on the chicken. Yeah, and I wonder. It be treated to where they don't sprout with some kind of a chemical inhibitor. Nice. All the more reason to buy organic. <laughs> Also, I guess the same rule would apply to us not to eat the green potatoes, or the green part yeah. of the potatoes. Uh, I have a question about the cactus. Yes. <laughs> uh, what part of the cactus can the chickens eat? Is it all of it? Just My understanding is that the chicken the can eat the whole thing. Because we can eat the whole thing. Isn't that generally true, that if we can eat it, the chickens can eat it? It's not true with cats. Uh, <laughs> okay, to burn off the spines of the chickens? Do you have to burn off the spines? I don't see my chickens particularly go. I have cactus out in the field, and I don't see them particularly when they have options. Like if they're coming, they're not going out there. But I could experiment. I haven't burned off. I would think, though, if I gave it to them in the tube, that it was already prepared for them. <laughs> Mexican food, this is called nopalito, right? A nopal. And then the tuna is the fruit, right? <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. The, the cochineal, yeah, the insect that's on there. Do y'all know about the. It's a white, fuzzy insect, but if you squeeze it, it's beautiful purple dye. And, and they use it in to dye um, cloth. Or we used to have a vending machine here that 
that sold uh, ocean spray grapefruit juice. It was a nice pink color. And you look in the ingredients, and cochineal was one of the ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> they use a bug to color. Oh. It's better than red dye number 40, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Cosmetics, yeah. yeah. Just so, you know, save money, ladies, and just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Back on this question on the preparation, a lot of, if you go to a, some HEB, depending on what part of town, they'll have these selling already chopped up, these fine, uh, fresh uh, cactus. And usually it's kind of in thin strips. I yeah, mean, okay. I, th I personally probably wouldn't go through that much preparation for my chickens. I'll probably, <laughs> if I burn the things, I'll throw it out there and they yeah. can pick what they want. Yeah. Um, Yes, there might be another choice yeah. to see how it is when it's prepared. But I think the main thing is get the spines off and then find what we're going to do. Yeah. Yeah, that would not feel very good going down. Well, what about the, the balloons that are on the cactus? Do they eat those? Yeah, those you mean the, the, the fruits? The fruit, the yeah, the yeah. The tuna we make jelly. We, we make uh, or, uh, a, a syrup.